right, well, we've got a business alert. The countdown is on just over 24 hours until the public decision is made. They may have already made it in private, but tomorrow we find out whether interest rates will be down. And right now during our show, you need to tune in at this time tomorrow. 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time is when we will have it for you. But for now, the Federal Reserve Chairman and his board are meeting right now behind those doors to discuss it. At this hour, they're hashing it all out. Now, the markets seem to be basically just expecting at least a quarter point cut. Some are hoping for a full point, but should Ben Bernanke and company give them what they want? Our Fox panel is here to talk about a Tom Atkins from Remax Fairlawn, who just met Liz Clayman. I'm surprised about that. <laughs> Pat she Powell, as he is lovely, <laughs> who is old friends with Liz Clayman. Good to see you, Pat. Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital, and Gary Kalpbaum of Kalpbaum and Associates. Ladies first, Pat. Is it a done deal already? We say that the, the decision is going to be made tomorrow. Have they already made it? I'm pretty sure they have. And what is it? I think they're going to raise. I, I'm with the consensus on this. I think they're going to raise. I don't you think they're lower. I mean, sorry. Cut. Excuse me. <laughs> raise it You had a 50% right. chance of being right. <laughs> hey, I think that's been Fed policy for 20 years. Yeah, right. That's right. No, I think they're going to cut by a quarter of a point. I don't think they should. But Has it been I, worked into the market? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The consensus, if, if the market doesn't get it, the market's going to have a really tough day tomorrow. Peter Schiff, uh, whether they raise, and that does seem to be a little bit of the consensus, should they raise? You mean cut? And no, no, they cut. shouldn't Look cut. Look at me. I'm sorry. You know, Everybody's going to uh, Unfortunately, they're probably going to cut. It's disgraceful. They should be raising rates. They never should have lowered them in the first place. Uh, this, you know, as an investor, of course, you know, I'm profiting dramatically from what they're doing. You know, my clients and my money is invested in gold and gold stocks and oil and foreign currencies and foreign stocks. These are the things that are benefiting from the inflation the Fed is creating. But the average American, he's, all he's got is his wages. And what the Fed is doing is reducing the value of American paychecks every single day. Are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Net income growth has been up 10% per year for five straight years. But What's so terrible no. about that? Oh, by the way, I'm not defending the Fed. I think, they're, I think quite frankly, I think the Fed has been run best backwards for at least 25 years. And, and, and Alan Greenspan running the Ben Bernanke. Look, the, right now, the reason why you have a, a terrible real estate market is because they raise rates too much, too fast. And how do we know? Because the Fed okay. blinked last meeting. They dropped it. Yep. There's no policy change in America anywhere at any level. That means that they made a mistake and they know it. And now they're trying to fix their mistake. Yeah, those, are nominal, those are nominal. Those are Nominal income gains. The average American's no. wages, their 10%. dollars, the dollar is losing value. It's hitting all time record lows against a basket of currencies. It's going down every day. Yeah, if you're the buying cost in Ireland, it matters, I guess, but if you're buying in America, it's no. wonderful. Gary, the go ahead. Purchasing power Hold is going on, down Peter. right here. Let's let Gary talk. Go ahead, Gary. Look, after listening to Peter, I'm moving to Switzerland. Uh, I mean, everything's heck in a handbasket here. Look, uh, I, I don't like the Fed. I don't think there should be a Fed. I don't. They're probably here, playing, here. Play, they're playing Parcheesi right now uh, and having some food. Uh, He's right. Look, look, I think they're going to lower a quarter point. I think they should stand pat. Let me tell you who they're catering to. They're catering to Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, Washington Mutual, and all the hedge funds that are 15 to 1 margin in ridiculous products just so they can get things better so nobody goes bankrupt. They're not helping the individual. Matter of fact, mortgage rates have gone up since the last rate cut, so right. they're doing nothing for nobody hey, as far as I can say. Well, I agree with, I agree with so something somebody else said. What about, no what about this? We had, we had Alan Green, even Alan Greenspan, when we had right. him on a, a couple of weeks ago, suggested that maybe, just maybe, the world could survive without the Fed. Is Alan Greenspan right? Not in that regard. And Alan Greenspan is sort of forgetting what he's done and what Paul Volcker before him has done. He's forgetting that the reason we have such low interest rates has to do with 9-11. It has to do with the Fed loading the market with liquidity to stabilize the economy after 9-11. The fact that we have such a great economy to a great extent is, is because of the prudent moves by the Fed and the fortuitous tax cut we got in 2000. No, no, it's, no it's not. It's not. It's not. We don't have am, a great economy. I am with Gary in that. When he says that the Fed has, is pandering, there are a lot of people who feel that the Fed gets these phone calls through other people. I mean, who knows who's making well, the calls? Let's not forget who the Fed Don't works forget for. Us. The Fed does not work for, for the, the United American people. It doesn't work for the government. The Fed works for the banks. Mm -hmm. So what we have is you have, there's, there's an area if the Fed cuts too much, they create inflation. There's an area if the Fed increases rates too much, they crush the economy. And there's a big, fat, gray area in between. And they're always Look, on the high side where the we, banks make the money and the people get screwed. We don't, remember, we don't have a great economy. We have a terrible. Yeah. 
novel economy. <laughs> we're borrowing. Will you let me finish? We're borrowing a bunch of money from the rest of the world to consume what they produce. Interest rates are low, not because Americans are saving, but because foreign governments are irresponsibly lending us money. Hey, hey you know, They're, Peter, hey, Peter, me, Peter, before you say it's all the Chinese that are responsible for our good economy, don't forget about all the workers, no, all the entrepreneurs in the United States no, no. who do a lot to make this country great. We, we don't have, the most productive in the world, we, by the we, way. We don't have a good economy. We're not the most productive in the world. American workers, but it's not China not, that makes this country work. It's the United States workers that Peter, make this country work. But the problem is they're not working it. enough. They're consuming too much. We're spending too much. We're not producing. Well, We're not I'll saving. Peter, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold why on. hasn't it imploded yet? I've been listening to you for a long time, and this guy, Peter, has made a lot of money for his clients. That is true. And so he's clearly making some money for somebody. But I want to know why then has the economy not it imploded? Is, it is happening. I mean, it's not, it's not, I guess Where? it's not going to explode all at once, but you can see what's happening to the cost of living. You can see what's happening to food prices, energy prices. You can see the incredible buildup of wait, external liabilities. You can see wait. the housing bubble beginning to collapse. That I mean, it's all happening. That is by the price of like televisions and stereos and, and all the other things no, no, that go down. That's, 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 you, you can't look at one that's aspect of the first economy. Stuff. No, no, go, 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 go ahead. Look, that's that's not true. Go ahead. Tom has it exactly right. It's a market basket. Yes, oil is going up. Yes, food is going up. But Tom has it right. It's televisions that are coming down. And by the way, housing prices are coming no, down. No, you know, we had the same. Well, Peter, hold on. Look, a that's second. just not true. We hold on, the same Peter. Go ahead, Gary. Go yeah, ahead, hold Gary. on. This, this is not the Peter show. First off, I want to say whatever Tom is on, I want to have. Tom, whatever you're drinking, God bless you. Uh, <laughs> it's money. But, let, let me just say this as far as the Fed. If the Fed wants to do something right, let's turn back the clock about three years ago when Alan Greenspan watched these lenders lower the bar as far as can be and handed out money to anybody, causing what we are seeing right now. Alan the Greenspan's not responsible for that. They, Alan Greenspan's oh, responsible for do. interest rates. Gang, not gang, they, gang, 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 gang. We gotta, we got to move on, but we're going to keep all of these panelists. If you like them for the first round, wait till you see them for the second and the third and the fourth. Yeah, we're waiting for blood here. All It'll right, happen. Well, we've heard well, the government and your 401k plan, should the government get involved more or stay out altogether? Do you think our Fox Business panel has any thoughts on this? I doubt oh, it. They're so yeah. unopinionated, <laughs> particularly getting Tom Atkins in the fight. But we've got Charles Payne here now as well. Good to see you, Charles. Thank you. Thank what you. do you think? Is this just pure danger or... Are they looking for some important things to change about the fee structure? You know, I'm, I'm always reluctant to have the government get involved, but obviously in hindsight of what's happened in the mortgage industry and the fact that maybe there should have been better disclosures and better education, I understand where they're coming from, but you don't want Congress involved anything like this. In fact, you know, we look at Wall Street, Sarbanes-Oxley, for instance, a knee-jerk reaction to a, a particular, you know, wave of corporate malfeasance that I think hurt America to the point where now New York is number two in IPOs in the world. So you wonder how far Congress will get. Once you let them off their leash, they go nuts, and sometimes it's counterproductive. Tom? Yeah, um, they're always looking for this balance of regulation, uh, how much is going to save you, how much is going to cost you. And, and if there's any lesson to the private sector in America is keep your keep your closet clean before the federal government comes in and tries to clean it for you. Yeah. It's the worst thing in the world. Like, I'm from the government, and I'm here to, like, do what? You know, that, that fill in the blank could be anything from help you to crush your life. To, so if you're, if you're in the business uh, of anything, anything, I don't care what it is, Keep your closet straight. Do whatever you can to be honest with the American Peter, people. is this one thing the entire panel can agree on? Well, you know, I think it's kind of ironic that the government is worried about these small fees on these 401ks as they're, you know, exacting the greatest fee of all, undermining the value of everybody's 401k by causing inflation and debasing the value of our money. You know, in the last oh, segment, go again. You know, well, let me, let me finish this point because I didn't get a chance to do it before. You know, inflation today is as bad as anything we had in the 1970s. Sure, back in the 1970s. Wait, 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 wait. Let inflation is as bad as anything we yes. had. How do you, how do you figure let, that? Inflation me, was, was double digits. It's let now been less than four or five percent. My point. In the 1970s, you had clock radios and digital uh, watches and cassette players. All those things were falling in price, just like uh, consumer electronics are falling in price now. But we had double-digit inflation. The reason we don't show it now is because in the late 1990s, the government changed the way they calculate the CPI. The government decided that they thought the CPI was overstating inflation, so they fixed it. Well, what they did is they now created an index that dramatically understates inflation. So the reason inflation 
inflation is not as bad as it was in the 1970s is because government was more honest about well, it. Well, Gary, Gary Kelp, they're lying about it now. Peter's problem is that he's so young, he doesn't remember the 1970s. <laughs> I'm so old, I do. And believe me, inflation was very palpable. You knew that the value of your paycheck began to go down week by week by week. Just That's as, happening. at the same hey, time, hold on, hold on Peter, you had your chance, Peter. Peter. Just at the same time as your paycheck got you into higher tax brackets, so you had this stagflation that was killing people. It's How did happening. we go from Hold on, it, Peter. Gary, go ahead. How did we go from fee disclosure over to inflation in, in 30 seconds? Because that's a I big fee. It. Okay, look. And we're all paying it. All I can tell you is I remember the early 80s and interest rates were at 15, 16 percent. If there was real bad inflation, the bond market would be crashing right now. It will so be. Don't wait for it to happen. It's going to crash. Well, you know, go ahead. You don't see any similarities between the 1970s? You don't, you're not, you don't okay. see what's happening Peter, Peter, you got it. Peter, you got to hold on. Go ahead. One thing I do want to say, you know, today we had consumer confidence numbers come out, and the uh, current uh, people's expectations over the last 18 months haven't been this low for the future. And I really worry about people who always talk about fear and anti this and anti that. And, you know, I always talk about Peter because he's really that type. He's in that category. And what's happened is the real reason people aren't involved in their 401ks, they have no confidence in the stock market. And they keep watching it go up over and over and over. And it pains me to see so many average people buy a pair of Crocs but don't own the stock, go to McDonald's but don't own the stock. You know, anyone out there can be a part of this market, and yet they're not taking advantage of it because they're so afraid. So the fear mongers actually create uh, almost a self-fulfilling thing when people don't react and people go I into a know, shell. Charles, a lot of people saw what happened when they, they dipped their toe in the dot-com explosion. They did, I agree. They that was burned, That was a Charles. long time ago. And let's also, thing, also, Liz, look what they were buying. They were buying companies and stocks that were on a you know, business plan on a napkin. They weren't buying solid mm. fundamental companies. They didn't own United Technologies or General Dynamics or Nikes. How many people out there own $1,000 worth of Nikes and don't, don't own $1,000 worth of the stock? Actually, so. if anybody wants the government to take over their 401k. Just look how beautifully they do with Social Security. Maybe, maybe that's an example that we should all follow. we got to leave this I segment for now. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Fans of the world champion Red Sox in chilly but sunny Boston celebrating their World Series win. An earlier parade winding its way from Fenway Park to City Hall. The Red Sox, of course, swept the Colorado Rook. rook Rockies, rookies. They look like rookies, some of those games in a fall classic. The second world championship for Boston in just four years. Who wants to clean that up? Not me. Those Boston fans are messy. Oh, Liz! New Yorkers would clean up after <laughs> Yeah, themselves. right. And Cleveland, they would not ever drop the paper in the first That's place. true, that's true. They're very <laughs> clean. Okay, so check this clean. out, David. What happened in that World Series could cost Taco Bell a lot of money. A taco for each stolen base. It's not a bad marketing idea. In fact, it's really creative. It was cooked up by some of the folks at Taco Bell. So when someone stole a base in Game 2 of the World Series, the taco rush for all customers was on. This is a live picture at the Taco Bell in, in New Rochelle, New York. That guy's eating his 24th taco, the guy who's just heading to the bathroom there, you see? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for three hours, the fast food chain is handing out free tacos. The first free one is scheduled to be handed out at the top of the hour. <laughs> oh, boy, I can only imagine the line. How many times could you do that? Actually, after our Wendy's Day last Friday, we've got to have a taco day here. Tom, Tom Atkins was suggesting that. All right, well, people are lining up for free food, specifically a taco that costs around 77 cents. So the question screams to be answered, is that really worth anybody's time? Is it worth your time to wait in line for a 77 cent taco? Free taco. So we're talking like taco economics, but we welcome back our Fox Business panel. We've got Pat Powell. And the whole gang here. Pat, do people value a, a 77 cent taco more than they value their time of waiting in line for something? You like bet this? we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, there's nothing Americans like more than a free lunch, and tacos mm -hmm. giving it to everybody, everybody today. It's not about the time, it's about the event. You know, Charles, there was a magazine that doesn't exist anymore called Spy, which for their first issue, they wrote a series of checks, each one worth less than a dollar, like a check for 67 right. oh, cents to millionaires. Everyone was cashed with their own signature. Right. Donald Trump, all these millionaires, <laughs> cash check. So it was worth their time the to sign is. a check for right. 30 cents, bring it to the bank, and their deposit. It's, it's amazing, you know, particularly living in this New York, New Jersey area because of differences in taxes. I'll actually see people who will drive up to different places, you know, three hours out of the way 
to save maybe 10 bucks on this and that. And I, ne I never understand why people don't calculate how much their time is worth, perhaps how much the gas is worth. And we love stuff in America, and we love it free. So if you had that together, that combination, forget about it. Free stuff, forget That's about it. That's called penny wise, pound foolish, Tom. That's right. You know what, though? What a fantastic marketing employee. That's I mean, David Novak. Incredible. Novassa. He and that company at Yum Brands, they have a marketing organization there where they sit around and they say, let me come up with the most creative idea. And they do. And even, That's what happens. They come up with amazing if, ideas. Even if you don't go to get a free taco, you're going to hear about it. I'll, I'll bet you for every person that gets a free taco, 500 to 1,000 people heard about it. And I'll bet you four or five of them stop by. They're going to make a profit. Will there be this. anybody disappointed or, or maybe uh, ticked off at the line and say, geez, I wasted my time doing this? You know, this. the people who are going to be most disappointed are the ones who are working till 5 because the promotion <laughs> ends at 5. And so they can't get there and pick up you a know, taco on the way home from course, dinner. Of course, psychologically, the longer the line, the better. You know, the guys who do the three car Monty yeah. in the street, they bring their own crowds with them. And obviously, the bigger the That's crowd, right. the more everybody wants to get involved. Wait, wait, let's let Peter. We, we, yeah, we've got Peter some Peter emotion Peter to weigh in. Tell us, how it's, all terrible, <laughs> well, Tell us well, how it's all terrible, Peter. Tell us how it's all tied to inflation. Well, you know, you, know you, you make a good point. You know, you know, with, with the way the cost of food is rising, and the way the cost oh, of free tacos, you know, and in a year or two, you know, you're going to see some much longer lines for free food. Uh, you know, when people are unemployed and they they, they can't afford this. So, Gary Kalbaum, what do you think of Peter there? <laughs> Welcome to the Peter Show. Hey, no, the so Peter you know, Principle, go ahead. Yeah, the, the taco is now not 70 cents, it's a dollar because of inflation. So, <laughs> here you go. Look, this is a great marketing move. We're talking about it. They're going to get a ton of people in there. They're going to buy sodas and everything else under the sun. Great move by them. Whether it wastes anybody's time, look, to each his own. Would I drive 10 miles to get one? No. The next guy, maybe. So, wh whatever somebody likes. All right. Enough of this taco hey, economics. Hey, listen, Yum Brands, brands Yum Brands is up a buck 44 today. <laughs> there you go. Geniuses. And that thing Geniuses. Goes there there you go. That's two and five, everybody's not working. They're in taco. That's a three and two thirds increase. increase. That's amazing. Three All and right. two thirds percent yeah. jump well, in that stock. You figured today. they got a, at least 100 million shares outstanding, probably more, so. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Five hundred million dollars. And we're here talking about it too. Well, this Fox News alert: the Fed is discussing right now what to do about interest rates. The decision will come public tomorrow. The markets seem to think another cut is in the cards. Our next guest agrees. Diane Swank, chief economist for Mesero Financial. On the other hand. Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital. And I'm going to start with Diane here. Diane, tell me, is it the right decision if the Fed cuts? Well, that's probably still debatable. I think it is the right decision in the sense of the old risk management approach that the Fed used to take under Greenspan, although under this new regime, it's not as clear. We have seen a lot of the repricing in the market come through. The asset-based commercial paper market is still a little dicey out there. But for those people on Main Street, they've not seen much of the spillover yet. Um, and on that fraud side of it, it's not clear um, how justified this cut is. Now, Peter, you do see a disconnect between, a very clear disconnect be between Wall Street and Main Street. Street. Explain why. Well, sure. I mean, Wall Street benefits from all this cheap money, and they can borrow money cheaply and invest it abroad, just like I'm doing. But it's not helping the economy. It doesn't help the average American to see the value of his wages, the value of his savings diminished. I mean, the British pound today is at a new uh, high for, I don't know, 30 years. Uh, this week, you had new highs uh, in the Canadian dollar, So, Peter, the let me just, dollar, let me just understand how to fix things. We, we, I think everybody by now gets what you think the problem is, and not everybody would disagree with you. The question is how you fix it. The Fed can do several things. The no. Fed can... The Fed Fed can make things tighter and uh, increase interest rates as you would like. Also, the Treasury Department, though, could talk up the dollar, which I have to agree with you. It hasn't been doing. In fact, it, some people would say it's been doing just the opposite. But talk is not going to help. You know, there is no quick fix. We have a big problem here as a nation, as a society. The Fed can't fix it. The government can't fix it. We need to fix it. Now, sure, the government can get out of the way. The government can reduce spending and reduce taxes and reduce the burden it places on productive society. But we have to stop stop all this reckless borrowing and spending. We have to stop buying things How? we can't afford. How would you stop people from borrowing? Would you put you up government interest... regulations about no, it? No, no. You let interest rates go to a normal okay. level. People wouldn't be borrowing all this money if they couldn't afford it. You know, if we had if we had much higher interest rates in line with where they should be, we wouldn't have all this okay. reckless borrowing and spending. That's why the Fed should be raising rates. It doesn't mean we're going right. to okay. avoid a recession. Diane, I get it. Diane, what's your solution? Okay. 
Well, you know, there isn't any easy solution. You're right about that. But I do think at this stage of the game, given where the Fed is at, it's going to be a big debate. They will cut rates. Um, it's because they, at this stage of the game, they have to. And it's not, it, it does help Main Street a little bit. Those borrowers who are most on the edge that didn't realize they're getting into adjustable rate mortgage, they're not the pillars of consumers of the economy. But, you know, if it stops a couple defaults from happening, that's okay with me. It's but it's not going to stop. Broader, it's not going to stop In the, the broader defaults. context, it will stop a few, not Diane, a lot. Diane, is the but Fed pandering to the big financial? financial names out there who have found themselves in trouble because of bad bets they made. You know, I hate to say that because I have so many friends on the Fed. I do think that the, that Wall Street has had a louder voice. With that said, mm -hmm. let's face it, the Fed is, the plumbing of our financial system is Wall Street. And when it backs up, we don't want it hitting Main <laughs> Street, and it's their job to stop it from backing up. So, I mean, it's kind oh, of blunt to put it that way, but we don't analogy. want that on Main it Street, okay? Good. I understand. <laughs> I finally understand. Peter, what do you think? You get the snake <laughs> out into the drain and start clearing that out? Well, you know, Sorry, we can go I don't, really far I don't, with this one, right, Liz? <laughs> I don't sure. disagree with Diana. I do expect the Fed to cut rates. I mean, I hope they don't. I hope they surprise me. But, you know, they really need, as I said, they need to be raising rates. Just standing pat isn't enough. And I don't even know how high they, they, they need to raise, raise them. They can't raise rates but, right now, though. That's not, well, that, that's not, it's not feasible for them to do it right now. That's just well, not realistic. At some point, they're going to have to bite the bolt and do it. And the longer they wait, You're the longer right. they delay this, the worse it's going to be for every American. Diane, it's, let me let me just well, ask you, know, you I, I, at what point, at what point might the Fed decide, gee, this dropping dollar is, is worrisome. It's going to affect... The, the ability of, of the market to continue to go up because people are afraid that their assets denominated in dollars aren't going to be worth as much tomorrow. You know, the dollar doesn't affect them as much as most people think because we've not seen as much inflation from the dollar in the last in the last decade in particular. Oh, yes, we really have. I knew that. Peter was going to chime with in that, on that. With that said, with that said. Diane can't hold see on, Hold on, with that said, really go ahead, Diane. With that said, the real issue is a couple quarters down the road, we've always found that the Fed's cure to these financial crises has a greater effect on stimulating the economy than the crisis had itself in hurting growth. And that means they're going to have to start taking back. And if you listen to the Fed, they're already talking about, as they're giving us an ease, they're talking about recalibrating as quickly as necessary. It's always easier to give it than take it back. So by mid-next year, I would like them to be taking it back. I don't think we're going to see them taking it back till late 2008. And that could set up a much larger problem for us down the road in terms of inflation. Inflation. Diane Swank, you're welcome anytime right here on Fox Business. Thanks. <laughs> As for Peter, good to see you again, Liz. <laughs> Peter's oh, going to be Peter's back. always gonna welcome, be too. All right. Well, Fox The feds have their eyes trained right on your 401k. They say they are ready to examine the fees charged 401 accounts. But is this a case of the cure being worse than a disease? And who ends up paying? Rich Edson is on the story. We talked about this in the last hour. It's got people riled up, Rich. Yeah, it really does. We're looking at 401k fees here. You know, most people pay them when it comes to their 401ks. And the House Ways and Means Committee, headed by Charlie Rangel, is taking a look at whether they're disclosed properly when you decide which 401k you want to choose and which way you want to go with your investment and retirement dollars. Now, uh, some of what the SEC and the Department of Labor were saying today is they're looking into three initiatives that would essentially uh, require 401k companies to come back and say, these are the fees you're being charged, this is what you paid this quarter or this year. Uh, or this is what you're going to pay if you decide to, to sign up with us. Now, those, uh, the Department of Labor and the SEC will probably come back in the next several weeks with a firm proposal. There are a couple of proposals going on in the House and Senate right now. Uh, the industry, the 401k industry, industry will see more on the side of regulation. They, the folks who testified today said they're for regulation. They like the transparency. They just want to make sure that Congress isn't too heavy-handed by hamstringing what they're allowed to do and making too much of a rigid system uh, where they they can't, what they say, innovate uh, because they're hamstrung so much. All right, Rich, thanks very much. Switching gears now. Google is taking on Apple in the wireless world. The search giant reportedly working on its own cell phone. The device would allow you to access all of Google's popular services, including Maps and YouTube, while you're on the go. But is the cutting edge company a little bit too late to the party? That's the question for our panel. Pat Powell, what do you think? I think absolutely not. You know, and if you want, if you want to think about, um, do you use beta or do you use VHS? You don't have to be first, and you don't have to be the earliest to come out with something that everybody's but going to use. But beta died. 
That's my point. Is we all use VHS. We don't use the first one, which was Beta. Beta Max. Yeah, Absolutely, Beta Max. that's but my point. Charles, the iPhone is just fresh out, and so it makes you wonder. You know, Google has to really come out and be something special too to get this kind of attention that the iPhone did. Absolutely, and uh, you know what? It's good that Apple's done so well because it just and in, in sort of enhances what Google wants to do and sort of you know validates what they're trying to do. They also want to buy Spectrum. They want their own band in the airwaves because they want to take this to a level that we haven't even seen. I mean, the Apple iPhone is cute. My wife has one. And you can do a lot of things with it, but to have all the things at Google at your fingertips really would be phenomenal. And this is just just to let you know how early it is as far as advertising on this space. It's only a thirty-three million dollar business right now. It's going to be twelve billion in a few but years. But Gary, you know, tell me about wives and iPhones. My <laughs> wife has an iPhone as well. Uh, but with the iPhone, you can get into all those things that uh, that Google is going to let you get into. I mean, it might take. Maybe one click extra, but you could probably find a way of getting around that. You can get you can get Google Maps right now yeah. on a Rim BlackBerry. So, so what's the big deal? You know, I just think there's something in, in in the world called brand name recognition, and Google has brand name recognition, and I think whatever they come out with, as long as it works. It is going to sell. Uh, I don't think they're late in the. Of course, they're a little. They, they should have come out first, but I don't think overall they're late in the game. And I have the sneaking suspicion they're going to sell a heck of a lot okay. of these things. But Peter, Google is a search engine. They don't make electronic pieces and property and stuff like Apple does. Would they then license that out to a, an electronics I mean, company? I, mean, I don't know. There's a lot of innovation in this industry. I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of new products coming out over the years. So I'm sure they're not too late. Uh, who knows how they're going to do? As an investor. Though I certainly, you know, I think both Google and Apple shares are overpriced. I wouldn't be buying uh, shares of Google but because you, you think they're going to get But would you be buying the... for the company that Google would license out the phone to, say, make us this phone? I, mean, Google I don't know. Is a I don't know who engine. that. I don't know who that company is, Liz. I don't know if it's a good value. Uh, I'd have to look at it. I mean, right. you know, we, we've made a lot of money. I, you know, I, I own some of these companies in, in Hong Kong and Singapore that are big in the cell phones. They're supplying a lot of these companies. There's a lot of money to be made there. Uh, you know, I just don't like buying expensive stock. Right now, the betting is that L. LG might do it. That they're talking to LG. They're talking to different people in, in Asia, but LG seems to be at the top of the list well, right Pat, now to actually make the. Back film. to your analogy, you were talking about Beta and VHS. Of course, Beta died, right. <clears throat> but Apple, Apple and PCs have have coexisted for quite some time now. Three Absolutely. going on three decades. Is it possible that you could have iPhone be successful and Google's phone be successful? Abs absolutely. And there's a lot of room here, as Charles was saying, for for advertising because a lot of a lot of this um, uh, the technology hasn't really figured out how to fully pay for itself. We're in a highly restrictive and regulated industry when you talk about phones right now. Um, Google could open up the whole platform for everyone. I think the real winner here is not necessarily Google or Apple or, or LG. The real winner may be the consumer. I don't yeah. know. You One wonder, thing, Gary, yeah. if, Gary, if you look at Nokia, which was just a huge leader in the 90s, and then here comes Motorola, comes out with that Razor phone. And then you look at other competitors coming out with the chocolate, etc. And and it makes you wonder, it's not first in wins, it's yeah. who well, has look, the most innovative thing. Right. One thing I, I, I think is going to happen, I hold think... Hold on, uh, hold on, Gary, Gary, go Gary. Look, it is a tough business. If you are not on your game, you're dead. Look what's happened to Motorola stock uh, in the last year while Nokia has been soaring. It is about innovation. It is about the best product and the most accepted product by the public. So you best be on your game. Apple iPhone, I don't think it's the greatest in the world, but it has the Apple name and it's good enough and that's why it's selling so well. But notice, they had a lower prices also, $200. Uh, that uh, higher price just wasn't going to play out over time. Peter, you probably have nothing to say, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing I think everybody is underestimating is I think you're going to see a softening in demand domestically for these cell phones, particularly high-end cell phones. Over the next couple of years, Americans are going to be cutting back on their cell phone usage. They're going to be struggling with adjustable rate mortgage payments, higher food costs, higher energy costs, you name it. I'm shaking uh, my head. You know what I'm remembering, not going Peter? To have Peter, what I'm remembering phones. is not only the high inflation in the 70s, but I remember interest rates closing in on close to 20 percent. Remember that? Yeah, you know, it's going to be here again. Don't, you're not, you're not going to have to remember way back to the 70s. I'm moving to Switzerland. Switzerland. And you can be able to check that out on your phone, on your Google, Google phone, you as go. you check it for your best Pat, TV right now. Great way to end, Pat Powell. Thank you very much. Okay, gang, we'll be hearing more from you.